This morning, the Lord put something on my heart that has been in my heart for many weeks. He's asking, this is the Sunday, today is the day, even though this message has been, what's the word, uh, marinating. <laughs> it's been <laughs> marinating like a nice piece of beef, you know, you marinate. Uh, it's been marinating in my heart for several weeks. But today is the day, and I believe the Holy Spirit is witnessing right now. I'm going to ask you, as your pastor, please, please listen. Don't miss any of this. It's going to be a short message. But I don't want you to miss because God is speaking to the church and saying, you can count on my faithfulness. You can count on God's faithfulness. I want you to turn to somebody and say that. You can count on God's faithfulness. You can count on his faithfulness. Let's look at Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Looking at the scripture. Know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God. The faithful God. What kind of God? Faithful, faithful God. Who keeps his covenant and his faithfulness to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Everybody say it together. He is the faithful God. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I, I think we saw a wonderful example this week as uh, Queen Elizabeth II passed on. And everybody is just lauding her and just giving her praise and her life. Um, you know, eulogizing her that she was such a faithful sovereign, a faithful servant. I want to express my sympathy and my respect to those of you who are still part of the British uh, realm, the British uh, Commonwealth. Some of you come from lands where you're part of the British Commonwealth, and we want to express our respect to you and our, our condolences in the loss of your queen. But here's a woman who pledged her life at 21 years old, something like that, 21 years old, pledged her life to be a servant to her people and to represent the nation of England and Great Britain to the best of her ability. And she faithfully, faithfully kept her word through wars and through tumult and through uh, the economic downturns and the trouble with Northern Ireland. How many of you were long old enough to remember North, Northern Ireland, Ireland and the problems that England was having with Northern Ireland? I remember going through that. And then having three of her children divorced. Yeah. One, two, three. I think all within the same frame of time, she went through the loss of Diana yeah. and other tragedies in her life and so on. But she kept smiling. She kept on serving. She did her best. And I want to read something from Queen Elizabeth that you may have not have known. But uh, this is a quotation from... Her message that she gave to the nation in the year 2000, so it would be 22 years ago, her Christmas message to the nation and the Commonwealth of Nations. Here's what she says, and I quote, For me, the teachings of Christ and my own personal, personal accountability before God provide a framework in which I try to lead my life. This is Queen Elizabeth, her own words. I, like so many of you, have drawn great comfort in difficult times from Christ's words and his example. She was an avid believer in Jesus Christ. When Billy Graham was holding uh, meetings in uh, England, she had him come and she's uh, had a wonderful relationship with him. And he, I'm sure, shared the word of God with her many times. But she was a defender of the Christian faith. That is one of the roles of the sovereign in English, the defender of the Christian faith. A faithful woman, and she deserved to be respected and honored, right? Amen? Amen. But how much more faithful is our God? Amen. For centuries, from everlasting to everlasting, He is God. I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, who was and is and is to come. Faithfulness is one of the qualities of God that God talks a lot about in the Bible. As a matter of fact, there's a quotation from George Watson, a Bible author and student of the Bible. 
Here's what he says. Our blessed creator refers to his faithfulness more fre frequently in his word than any of his other attributes. Wow. Wow. So of all the character of characteristics of God that God talks about concerning himself, yes. love, holiness, power, purity, truth, there's so many different attributes of God, right? Yes. It's his faithfulness Hallelujah. that he talks about most. Yes. And if you notice, at the end, when we're ready to go to heaven, what is he going to say to those who serve him? Love well God. done, thou good and faithful servant. Yes. Faithfulness is a big deal. Somebody say faithfulness is a big deal. Yes. Because faithfulness is that which in our relationship with God is a universal attribute that we need to apply. We need to live it out. We need to live it out, faithfulness. Because God is faithful, he expects us to be faithful as well. I have been comforted by the faithfulness of God. Is there anybody here who can say, God's faithfulness has been my rock, has been my rock. I have been comforted by the faithfulness of God. I have counted on it. This morning, the Lord sent me here to tell you, count on the faithfulness of God. Yes. Some of you haven't seen the breakthrough yet that you're looking for. Some of you haven't seen all your prayers answered yet. Some of you have challenges in front of you. But the Lord sent me here to tell you a very simple message. God is faithful and he'll always be faithful. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He will not allow you to be tempted or tested above that which you're able to bear. God is faithful. God is faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. Hallelujah. This has been a comfort for me throughout my life. And I'm sure it has been for you as well. You can count on God being good. God is good and he's always good. God is loving and he's always going to be loving. God is with us and he'll always be with us. This is what I'm talking about this morning. God is greater than any problem I have, and he'll always be greater than any problem I have. I see you get the idea this morning. But this idea of God's faithfulness and this truth has been a source of comfort and an inspiration for me personally, I'm sure for you as well, to keep going on. To keep going on. Uh, I have fallen many times flat on my face. I've stumbled. I've been discouraged. I've been down in the dumps, but God has always picked me up. Hallelujah. Sometimes other people walked out, but God walked in. Hallelujah. I know he's a faithful God, and I can commend him to you this morning. Millions of believers over the centuries have found this truth so strengthening and so nurturing and, and, and so helpful, even in the face of death. There was one martyr, I can't remember his name right now. He said, the Lord has always been faithful to me. And they would demand, the Roman uh, government was demanding that he deny Christ's lordship and swear his allegiance to Caesar instead. You can't say Jesus is Lord because Caesar is Lord. No, I'm going to say Jesus is Lord. I'm sorry about you, Caesar. Amen. They turned him into a salad. Hallelujah. I was just... Now I mean, now we've gone to meddling. Um, here's what he said as he stood. They were about to burn him or turn him over to the lions. I can't remember. One of you afterwards is going to tell me his name. But he said, my God has been so faithful to me. So good to me. Why should I deny him now as I face eternity? You can put me on the stake. You can burn me. You can throw me to the lions. But I know in my heart of hearts, I will see God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, will see God. I will see God. I will see him. Yes. Hallelujah. Whom I have served. Yes. Whom I have loved. Yes. Yes. The dictionary definition of faithful is the fact or quality of being true to one's word or commitments. Yes. How many of you saw the rainbow yesterday at the, around supper time? And if you see that rainbow out in the sky yesterday, it was amazing. That's a covenant from God. God said, I have faithfully pledged that I will not destroy the earth anymore by water. And I'm going to promise you this because I'm going to put a rainbow in the sky. Every time it rains real heavy, once in a while, you'll see the rainbow. This is in the Bible. I'm not making this up, all right? 
He says, you'll see the rainbow, you'll know that I have sworn I will keep my promise. The earth will never again be destroyed by flood. That's God keeping his promise. Can you say amen? amen? So faithfulness is one who keeps his word or his promises. He is true to what he says. He is loyal. He is worthy of trust, reliable, consistent with truth. For those of you who like definitions. And that's all and a lot more. Uh, God is a lot more than that. But that just gives you an idea of what faithfulness means. God's been putting this in my heart for several weeks now. And he sent me specifically to say this to you. That God is faithful in all the seasons of life. I don't know, but I have a feeling there's some heartbreak. There's some heartbreak in this audience. And maybe even at home. But God has put this on my heart today to tell you. He can be trusted. You can trust him in the bad times as well as the good time. Right, Brother Angel? You talk about it all the time. He's faithful in all the seasons of life. Isaiah 54, verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed. Yet, everybody say yet. Yet, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken nor my covenant of peace removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. The whole earth can be shaken. Earthquakes happening, and there's gonna be some more. One thing you can know for sure, this earth is not our final destination. And the earth is gonna come under God's judgment someday. The Bible says that two thirds of the earth will be destroyed. But the Bible also says that we are inheriting a nation, a kingdom, that can never be destroyed. One that cannot be shaken. I love this verse. I want to read it again. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Take that to heart. Would you take that to heart this morning? God has been faithful to those who have gone before us. My wife and I have been very blessed to have grandparents and parents who were followers of Jesus. So for about 100 years now, my family, my grandfather got saved, I think, around 19, in the 1920s sometime. And so it's almost 100 years of testimonies that I've heard, and stories that I've heard over the years about God's faithfulness. During the Depression, during the, uh, the, the war, World War II, and being in Europe, and running for cover with the bombs falling, and no food, and and no doctors available, no hospitals, just doing the best they could, mostly praying their hearts out. Wow. God protected them. Yes. God was faithful. Yeah. He kept his word. Hallelujah. Amen. And he will not fail you. Amen. I'm speaking to somebody this morning. Amen. He will not fail you. The Amen. devil is a liar. Yes. The devil is a liar. Yes. That discouragement is not of God. Amen. That discouragement is not of God. Amen. God will see you through. How many of you had parents or grandparents or somebody who spoke the word of the Lord to you? Hallelujah. Anybody? Yes. How many of you know that God was faithful to them as well? Oh, yeah. So there's a track record here. Amen? Yes. He is still light over darkness, yes. strength over weakness, yes. joy over sadness, yes. hope for the hopeless, friend to the friendless, yes. father to the fatherless. Yes. What a faithful God we serve. I love this quotation from the time of Solomon when Solomon was dedicating uh, the temple, the new temple, the glorious temple in Jerusalem. This is in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 54. Look at this. When Solomon had finished all these prayers at the dedication and supplications to the Lord, he rose from before the altar where he was kneeling with his hands spread out towards heaven. He stood and blessed the whole assembly of Israel in a loud voice saying, Praise be to the Lord who has given us rest, given rest to his people, just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all the good promises he gave through his servant Moses. Wow. You know, Solomon was not a liar. Amen? Amen. He was telling the truth. Yes, Israel had backslidden. Israel had gone through terrible uh even dealings by God and chastisement by God. And then, but here they were at the temple. They had reached this place that God had promised. And they were 
Israel had become the leading nation in the world at that time. And the reign of Solomon spread from sea to shining sea. Amen? Amen. Because God keeps his promises. I want you to think of three things as we wrap up this message this morning. It says it's going to be a brief message. But I want us to come back and sing that song again, Brother Angel. You can count on God's faithfulness in his word. That's why we encourage Bible study. Because the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Look at what Isaiah 55 says. You all know this verse. But you want to read it together, you can. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God's word has never lost its power. These words are life. When Moses was exhorting the people just uh, before he you know, went home to be with God, he said, remember all the words that I have spoken to you. Because these words are your life. Your life depends on it. Your life depends on that. And I'm telling you, faith comes by hearing the word. Uh, enlightenment comes through the word of God. The entrance of thy word gives light. There's so many scriptures about the power of the word of God. We could spend weeks just talking about the word of God itself. How powerful it is. How much we need it in our life. But I want you this morning of, of focusing on faithfulness. And I want you to understand that God is faithful to his promises. He keeps yeah. his word. I can't honestly say that everything has always gone my way. Right? Have you ever had a prayer that was not answered? Oh, yeah. Am I the only one? Has anybody ever had a prayer that was not answered? Or well, you're still waiting for it. But how many of you can say God has always been with me? He has never left me. He's never forsaken me. Every time I open my Bible, it works. When I get down on my knees, it works. Hallelujah. When I lift my hand in worship, I feel his presence. Hallelujah. I don't understand everything, but I know God enough to know that I can trust my whole life to him. Hallelujah. That was a good place to give God some praise right now. Let's do that. Amen. You know the story about the, the little boy who was on the plane, and he was in flying first class, and... Uh, businessman next to him, why well, hi Sonny, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. And all of a sudden a storm arose and the plane starts going through this terrible buffeting. And it's go up and down and thunder clouds, lightning, all these things happening. The man is getting all nervous and the boy is just absolutely calm as could be. He says, Wow, he says, Aren't you afraid, little boy? He says, No, my father is the pilot. My father is the pilot. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's in the driver's seat. You can count on his promises. The prophet Jeremiah says, I am watching over my word to what? Perform it. Say it with me. I am watching over my word to perform it, God says. Jesus declared, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will never pass away. How many times have we been confused, discouraged, in need of wisdom, in need of help? And you open this book. And yeah. you took his words into yeah. your heart. Yeah. How many of you can say amen? amen? It has helped me many, many times. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to encourage you to fill your heart with God's word. Yeah. Fill your heart. The darker the world gets, mm -hmm. dig into the word more. The more you struggle, the more uh, problems you face, the more of the word you need to take into your heart. So he's faithful to his word. He's faithful to be with us and never leave us or forsake us. I said that already, but I want to touch on that. This is the second one. He's faithful in his abiding presence with us. Yeah. Reverend Joel last week spoke about following the presence of God. Remember that? Yeah. How many of you know the presence of God in your life is a real thing? Yeah. It's not just something spooky and hyper-spiritual that people, to, oh, the presence of God is here. Ooh. No, it's real. You know that God comes into your room sometime when you pray. You know when you're worshiping, you feel his presence. There's something real. It's not just emotional. There's something real about his presence. 
I love this verse in Isaiah 49. Can a mother forget her nursing child? Uh-uh. Can she no longer love the child she has born? Even if that were possible, I would not forget you, God says. Even if a mother could forget about her child or not love her child, which is a very, very rare thing, almost impossible. God said, even if that were true, I would not forget you. You see, I have written your name on the palm of my hands. Somebody said there's going to be tattoos in heaven. I don't know if that's a tattoo or not. Don't get me started. Hallelujah. If you have questions about that, you can see Brother Steve after service. He'll help you figure that out. He'll help you figure that out. But it does say, I've engraved my your name, right? Doesn't it say that? I've engraved your name on the palms of my hand. I will not forget you. He's faithful to protect you, to provide, to perform what he promised. Lamentations is one of the scriptures on the wall in our house. We look at it as we sit down for breakfast. This scripture right here. This I recall to mind. Therefore I have hope. The, through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. They are new every morning. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. What a faithful God we have. The last point. God is faithful to finish the work that he started in you and the work that he wants to do through you. This is very important. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Can you say amen this morning? He doesn't just call you into his relationship with himself and then say, okay, you're saved now. You can just keep on coasting till we get to heaven. No, he's got a job for you to do. He's got a work for you to do. In order to become, you know, most fruitful for God, you really got to stay close in your relationship with God. And God wants to finish working with you. And I've had many areas of my life. God's been working for 30 years, 40 years. I know that most of you here think that I'm almost perfect. <laughs> Nobody say yes. Thank you for your kind thoughts. I'm just joking. Many of you here know that I'm just a human being, flawed. And I'll be the first one to say it. But I have to tell you, God hasn't finished with me yet. He is faithful to perform it. He who began a good work in you, Philippians 1.6, is faithful to complete it. He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. There it is right there. I'm certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day that Jesus Christ. I've had the privilege, privilege of being with elderly saints. I have shared some of this with you, but some of you who are new here need to know this. When I started in the ministry, actually my father-in-law, Angela's dad, took me out. I was only about 20, 21 years old. And one of the first ways he was training me to be a minister, minister was to visit all the elderly people in the church. A lot of them, they couldn't get out anymore. Some of them were nursing homes. They used to call them nursing homes back then. And he said, come on, David, we're going to go out and serve communion to these people. And it was a little uh, intimidating for me and a little bit scary, I have to be honest with you. Because most of the time, these people are like, okay, young man, I see you're starting out. Let me tell you a few things. <laughs> and they felt like, oh, this is a good opportunity for, for me to share some of my wisdom. with." And I'm so glad they did. I'm so glad because I learned so much from those people, the wisdom that they gained over the years and years. And some of them prayed even like prophetic mm -hmm. prayers about me that I didn't understand until years later. And I can't tell you this because it's so personal, but there was one woman, every time I visit her, she would pray for a certain thing about me that I would almost say like, really sister, I don't think that has anything to do with my life. I wish she was still around because she was about 90 years old then. So she's in, been in glory for a long time. But do you know everything she said came true? Yeah. Everything she said came true. Mm -hmm. You see, God is working on me to make me what I ought to be. The children sing, right? It took six days to make the sun and the stars, the moon and 
the planets and Jupiter and Mars. I don't know it all. Monique, maybe you can help me. I don't know all the words. But God is patient with me because he's still working on me. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. But it is written, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those who love. But, the next verse says, but he has revealed them to us. So we can't even tell the full extent of all that God wants to do in us, but we will know it through the Spirit. This is a very important thing to put, always put those two verses together. Don't just quote, you know, eye has not seen, ear has not. The second part of it is, but he has revealed those things which eye cannot see and ears cannot, through the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So God, through his Holy Spirit, is doing deep things in our life. And, you know, when I was a teenager, uh, I was, believe it or not, I was very introverted. I, I could stay in my room and just read books. I, I love to read. And I, I wasn't really very extroverted at all. I was actually very shy. But God has like, pushed me and stretched me. And he's still stretching me. Uh, in so many areas of my life. And I know he's working on you. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's what? Workmanship. Workmanship. He has created us in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he has planned for us. The question that the Lord brought to my mind this morning is, will we give the best of ourselves to God so that God can do the best that he has through us? Yeah. And that's a good thought right there. Wow. Will we give the best of ourselves to God so God can do the best that he wants to do through us? And there's somebody that's counting on you. You know, we're counting on God's faith. How many of you count on God's faith? Faith was raise your hand. Raise your hand. Right? 100%. 100%. We're all counting on God's faithfulness. But you know what? God is still working on us. He is faithful. If we allow him, if we allow him, and sometimes we get stumbled by uh, things that have hurt us in the past. I have counseled with people who are stumbling over something that happened 30 years ago, and they're still not letting it go. God help us all. Help us all to, to have an up-to-date account with God. Lord, forgive my trespasses as I forgive those. Are you with me this morning? Forgive my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. Can't we keep our hearts clean and up to date with God? Should we do that? Amen? Amen. Every day. Every day. Amen. How are we going to become God's workmanship? Uh, by the way, that word workmanship also means masterpiece. We are God's master. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are God's masterpiece. God's still working on you. Don't say you're a piece of work. That's not nice, all right? Don't say that. Say you're a masterpiece. I snuck one more in there, Brother Joe. I know. But seriously, he is working in us. And I'm just going to say this right from my heart this morning. You are his representative to somebody. And maybe... You're the only real Christian that your neighbor will ever come across. I talked to a, a young man one time who went through four years of college. We were on the campus, as you know, of UCF. For eight years, we were campus pastors there. And we met a young man who told us about a, a friend in his class. He finally had developed a friendship with this man. And this other student said, you're the first person in school in four years that actually reached out and spoke to me. I've been going to college for almost four years and you're the first person who actually even went out of his way to actually speak to me. <coughs> Can you imagine that? I mean, of course, the teacher, you know, was lecturing and whatnot, but as far as developing a friendship, you don't know why God wants so much for your heart to be pure. You don't know why those trials come sometimes. God is trying to purify our hearts. 
God is trying to cause us to depend more on him, get rid of our insecurity. Somebody say amen. amen. And, 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 and cause us not to rely so much on our flesh. Paul said, you know, when he was speaking to, uh, I think it was the Ephesians, he says, we, we know, uh, we, we don't want you to be unaware of the trials we went through when we were in, in Ephesus, I think it was. And he says, we faced such enormous trials. He says, we felt the sentence of death. It was like, I'm going to die. Have you ever gone through a trial? You said, that, that's it. I'm, I'm going to die. There's, I can't take it anymore. And Paul said that. He says, he says this, these trials we went through, facing literally facing death, have come so that we will not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Hallelujah. On God who raises the dead. That's what we're relying on. The same spirit yes. that raised Christ from the dwe dead dwells in us. Yes. I can, somebody say with me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God can heal your body today. God can deliver you from fear today. He's a faithful God. He has not given you the spirit of fear. Somebody say amen. amen. I don't receive it. I don't wear it. I don't accept it. Get out of my heart. Get out of my life. Get out of my house. Spirit of fear, I reject you. I rebuke you. You don't belong in my family. In Jesus' name. A perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. I'll never be afraid of the one who loves me as much as God loves me. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. We've got a work to do. Yes. Would you close your eyes for a second? The team's going to come back, the worship team. I want to ask you a serious question before I close this morning. Worship team, feel free to come up. Hallelujah. I feel there's actually a prophetic dimension to this, this word that I'm going to share with you right now. I believe the Lord is saying, the reason I've been so tough, so hard on you, and I've been working so much to purify your life is because you have something very important to do for me. The training, the training you've gotten may seem difficult. The discipline may seem difficult, but you are a world-class athlete. You are a world-class Christian, and you're meant to shine for me. I want to shine through you, you are an ambassador of Christ. You are an ambassador of Christ. Would you stand with me this morning? Put your hand on your heart. Say, I am an ambassador. I am an ambassador of Christ. I want you to sing this psalm again as they sang uh, before about dedicating your life. This song is actually taken from a a pro prophetic verse in the Psalms where Jesus said uh, offerings and sacrifice you did not desire but a body you have given me. How many of you remember that verse? It's not the animal sacrifices, it's not the lambs and all the other sacrifices. It's my body I'm going to give as a sacrifice. My body is a living sacrifice. I want you to sing this and I noticed we had somebody come up and kneel at the altar uh, during this song is such a beautiful song of dedication. I'm going to invite you to come to the altar while they're singing it or kneel in your seat. But let this be a time of rededicating your life to God. Would you please do that today in Jesus' name? Amen. Yes, 
to him Amen. as he is to you. Amen. The Bible says we are uh, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, people belonging to God yes. that we could, we should show forth Amen. the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. How many of you can look this hand and say, God, I want to do a better job yes. on shining for you. I want to shine for you, Lord. Yes. I'm, my hand is up. 
And then you want to say, God, I, I want to do a better job of showing love to people. Lord, there's still work on you have to do on me. But as long as I live, I'm going to submit my heart to you, Jesus. And I'm not going to live it. I'm not going to live it, the Holy One of Israel. I know people who were in the 90s were still serving God. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. And he deserves my very best. Thank you for your sweet spirit in this place. Thank you, Lord, that it says in your word, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. And thank you that you're speaking to people today. You're speaking to me, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, that you would continue to be tuned to the voice of God in our life through each step, Lord. Counting on your faithfulness. And I, I do agree with that word, Pastor David. There's some that are going through such horrendous trials and buffeting and it is like a, something that God is preparing you for to strengthen you Lord help us help us to be faithful Lord. help us to be faithful Lord we've heard so much about your faithfulness this morning now we want to say Lord help us to be faithful Lord if there's something from my past that's hindering me Help me, Lord. Help me. Guide me to the right thing to find healing in that in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that your people will not have to carry wounds, Lord, for years and years and years. We pray, Lord, that you would heal their wounds, Lord. We know some of the things that people go through are so unfair and so unjust and they hurt. But God, I'm glad you're greater that that thing that the enemy tried to use to take you out will not in the name of Jesus. God will use it for good. Use it for good. Hallelujah. And we look forward, Lord, to our future in you. Faithful is he who has called you who also do it. Faithful is he who called you. I'm counting on that today. Are you? Count on his goodness. Count on his faithfulness. Count on it that he will never leave you or forsake you. That song kept coming to me this week. I am not alone. I am not alone. He will go before us. Thank you, Lord. We, we count on that today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Money in the bank may fail. People may fail. But I thank you that you will never fail. You will never fail, Jesus. Amen and amen. Go with us. Cover us with the blood of Jesus, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. We'll see you Tuesday on the phone and then Wednesday night in our Bible. So God bless you. Turn to somebody as you go and say, God is faithful.